Passion. 10 a.m. hour. Jesus takes up the cross, sets out for Calvary, and is despoiled of his garments. Preparation before each hour. O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the 24 hours in which, for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. Oh, please, give me help, grace, love, deep compassion and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my, my will to meditate them, and I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O oh merciful Lord, my loving intention, and let it be beneficial for me and for all, as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplished what I wish to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O oh my Jesus, for calling me to union with you by means of prayer. And to please you more, I take your thoughts your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, fusing all of myself in your will and in your love, and stretching out my arms to hug you, I place my head on your heart, and I begin. O oh my Jesus, insatiable love, I see that you allow yourself no rest. I feel your sighs of love and your sorrows. Your heart beats heavily, and in every heartbeat I feel explosions of love, tortures lovingly endured. Unable to contain the fire that devours you, you pant, moan and sigh, and in each moan I hear you say, cross. Each drop of your blood repeats, cross. All of your sorrows, in which you are immersed as though in an interminable sea, repeat among themselves, cross, and you exclaim, O beloved and longed for cross, you alone will save my children, for in you I consecrate all my love. The second crowning with thorns. Your enemies take you back into the praetorium and remove the purple mantle to clothe you again with your own garments, but Alas, how much pain! It would be sweeter for me to die than to see you suffer so much. The garment remains snagged to your crown, and they are unable to pull it off. So, with never before seen cruelty, they tear them both off together, garment and crown. At this cruel tearing, many thorns break and remain stuck inside your most sacred head. Blood pours down in large rebulets, and your pain is such that you moan. But the enemies, heedless of the tortures, clothe you with your own garment and violently press the crown back into your head. The thorns are driven anew into your eyes and into your ears. There is not one part of your most sacred head that is not pierced. Your pain is so overwhelming that you stagger under those cruel hands. Shivering from head to toe, you are about to die among atrocities and painful convulsions. With your languishing eyes filled with blood, you strain to look at me, asking for my help amidst so much pain. O oh my Jesus, King of Sorrows, let me sustain you and press you tightly to my heart. I want to take the fire that devours you to burn your enemies to ashes and rescue you. But you do not allow this. 
your yearnings for the cross become more ardent and you quickly seek to immolate yourself on it, even for your enemies. As I press you tightly to my heart, with you holding me tightly, you say to me, My child, let me pour out my love. Offer reparation along with me for those who appear to do good, but dishonour me. The Jews have clothed me with my own garments to further dishonour me before the people and convince them that I am a criminal. In appearance, the act of clothing me was good, but its purpose was evil. Oh, how many on the outside appear to do good, but how many appear to worthily administer the sacraments or appear to worthily receive them, but do so with human and evil motives. Good deeds done badly lead to callousness, and so I wish to be crowned a second time with thorns, whose piercings are sharper than the force to shatter this callousness, and with my thorns draw all souls to myself. Oh, my child, this second crowning is much more painful than the first. I feel my head engulfed with thorns. With every movement I make, and with every blow they inflict, I suffer many bitter deaths. With this second crowning, I make reparation for malicious offences, and for those who, upon finding themselves in a trying situation, instead of thinking of their own sanctification, waste and reject my grace, and cause the thorns to produce in me sharper piercings. I am therefore compelled to moan, to cry tears of blood, and sigh for man's salvation. Oh, I do everything out of love for souls, but they do everything to offend me. May you at least not abandon me in my pains and reparations. Jesus embraces the cross. My tortured and good Jesus, with you I offer reparation and with you I suffer. I see that the people are restless and await you with fury. Your enemies hurl you down the stairs and force you to the cross that is already prepared, which you long for with many sighs. You lovingly gaze on it and with a firm step approach and embrace it. But before carrying the cross, you kiss it and a shiver of joy runs through your most sacred humanity. You gaze on the cross yet again and with the greatest joy and measure its length and breadth. In it, you already established the portion for each soul, the dowry to bind them to the divinity in a bond of marriage and make them heirs of the kingdom of heaven. Then, unable to contain your love for souls, you kiss the cross again, saying, Beloved cross, finally I embrace you. You are the longing of my heart and the martyrdom of my love. O oh, cross, up to this moment I awaited you. My steps were always directed toward you. Holy cross, you are the goal of my desires and the purpose of my existence on earth. In you I consecrate my entire being and in you I place all my children. You will be their life, their light, their defence their safeguard and their strength. You will assist them in everything and will bring them gloriously to me in heaven. O cross, pulpit of wisdom, you alone will teach them true holiness and you alone will make of them heroes, athletes, martyrs and saints. Beautiful cross, you are my throne since I must depart from this earth, you will remain in my stead. In dairy, I, I bequeath to you all souls to protect and save them. To you, I entrust all souls. With these words, 
You eagerly allow the cross to be placed on your most sacred shoulders. O oh, beloved Jesus, the cross is too light for your love, but the weight of our sins adds to it, thus making it enormous and as immense as the expanse of the heavens. And you, my wearied and good Jesus, feel crushed under the weight of so many sins. Your soul is horrified at their sight and experiences the pain of each sin. Your sanctity is shaken before the ugliness so much sin produces. As the cross weighs upon your shoulders, you stagger, you pant, and a mortal sweat passes throughout your most sacred humanity. Oh Jesus, my love, I don't have the heart to leave you all alone. I want to share the weight of the cross with you, to comfort you in bearing the weight of our sins. I cling to your feet. In the name of all creatures, I love you for those who do not love you. I praise you for those who despise you, and I bless you. I thank you and I obey you on behalf of all. I promise to offer you my entire being in reparation for any offence you may receive. I console you with my kisses and continuous acts of love to offer you my loving acts in reparation for the offences acts souls trust upon you. But I realise that I am too wretched to be able to offer you true reparation. I need you to offer reparation in me. Therefore, I unite myself to your most sacred humanity and, with you, I unite my thoughts to your thoughts in reparation for all the evil thoughts, for mine and those of others. I unite my eyes to your eyes in reparation for all evil glances. I unite my mouth to your mouth in reparation for blasphemies and evil conversations. I unite my heart to your heart in reparation for all evil tendencies, desires and affections. In a word, by uniting myself to your immense love for all and to the immense good you do for all, I offer reparation for everything your most sacred humanity in me makes reparation for. But I am not yet satisfied. As I desire to unite myself to your divinity and completely lose my entire poor being in it, and in, and in this way, give you everything. The Sorrowful Way to Calvary My most patient Jesus, I see you taking the four steps under the enormous weight of the cross. I unite my steps with yours, so that when you are weak, staggering, about to fall, and have poured forth all your blood, I will be at your side to sustain you. I will place my shoulders beneath your cross to share with you its weight. Do not reject me, but accept me as your faithful companion. O oh Jesus, you gaze at me, and in that gaze I see you offer reparation for those who do not carry their crosses with resignation, but who rather swear, get irritated, commit suicide or murder and you implore love and resignation to the cross on behalf of all. But your pain is such that you feel crushed under the cross. You have taken only your four steps and you already fall beneath it. As you fall, you bang against the rocks and the thorns are driven more deeply into your head, while all of your wounds feel their harrowing effects and you pour forth new blood. And since you do not have the strength to get up, your enemies, irritated, force you to stand with kicks and shoves. My fallen love, let me help you stand. Let me kiss you, dry your blood and offer reparation with you for those who sin out of ignorance, anxiety or weakness. 
I beseech you to help these souls. Jesus, my life, forcing you to suffer, unheard of convulsions. Your enemies manage to put you on your feet and, as you stagger, I hear your panting breath. Your heart beats more vehemently and your pains pierce it intensely. You shake your head to clear your eyes of the blood that fills them and gaze earnestly. Oh, beloved Jesus, I now understand. Your mother, who is searching for you like a moaning dove, wishes to offer you her last words and receive your last gaze. You feel her sorrows as her torn heart is in your heart, both of which are moved and wounded in mutual love. You see her pushing away through the crowd as she desires at all costs to see you, to hug you and to say goodbye to you for one last time. You are profoundly transfixed upon seeing her mortal paleness and all of your sorrows reproduced in her by love. If she lives, it's only by a miracle of your omnipotence. You move your steps in her direction, but you can hardly exchange a glance. Oh, the blow that strikes your two hearts. The soldiers take notice and, striking and shoving you, prevent you and your mother from saying goodbye to each other one last time. The torment you both experience is so overwhelming that your mother, petrified with sorrow, is about to die. Faithful John and the pious women sustain her while you fall again under the weight of the cross. Then, your sorrowful mother does with her soul what she cannot do with her body. She fuses herself in you, makes the will of the Eternal One her own, and, assimilating all your pains within herself, she exercises her maternal office by kissing you, offering you reparation, comforting you, and pouring the balm of her sorrowful love into all your wounds. My sorrowful Jesus, I too unite myself with our sorrowful mother. I make all your pain and every drop of your blood my own. In each wound, I wish to act as a mother and, together with you and her, I offer reparation for all the dangerous encounters, for those who expose themselves to the occasions of sin, or, forced by necessity to be exposed to them, remain entangled in sin. You moan and fall under the cross. The soldiers fear you may die under the weight of so many martyrdom and from shedding so much blood. In spite of this, with lashes and kicks, they barely manage to force you back to your feet. You offer reparation for repeated falls into sins, for mortal sins committed by all classes of people, and you pray for obstinate sinners while shedding tears of blood for their conversion. My love, you are crushed. As I follow you in your reparations, I see that you stagger under the enormous weight of the cross. You shiver from head to toe. At their continuous shoving, the thorns penetrate more and more into your most sacred head. The cross, with its heavy weight, digs into your shoulder to the extent of forming a wound so deep that it exposes your bones. With every step, it seems that you die. Although you are unable to walk farther, your love which can do all things, gives you strength. As you feel the cross dig into your shoulder, you offer reparation for hidden sins, those for which reparation has yet to be offered, and that increase the bitterness of your convulsions. Beloved Jesus, let me place my shoulder under the cross to comfort you and offer reparation with you for all hidden sins. But your enemies, again fearing that you may die under the cross, force a Cyrenian to help you carry it. Unwilling and complaining, he helps you, not out of love, but because he is obliged. Then there echoes in your heart all the complaints of those who suffer, who lack resignation and who act out of rebellion 
anger and contempt. Your sufferings increase in seeing that souls consecrated to you, whom you call to assist you and be your companion in sufferings, flee from you. And if you press them tightly to yourself by allowing them to share in your sorrows, oh, how they rest themselves free from your arms and seek out pleasures, thereby leaving you alone to suffer. O oh, my Jesus, while I offer reparation with you, I beg you to hold me in your arms and hug me so tightly that there be no pain you suffer that I do not endure, so that through them I may be transformed and may make up for the abandonment of all souls. Beloved Jesus, you are overcome with weariness and, all bent over, can hardly walk. And I see that you stop and try to look. Oh, heart of mine, what is it? What are you looking for? Oh, it is Veronica who, fearless and courageous, approaches you with a cloud and dries your face that is completely covered with blood. And, and you leave your face impressed on the cloud as a sign of gratitude. My generous Jesus, I too want to dry your precious blood from your face, but not with a cloud. I wish to offer you my entire being to comfort you. I wish to fuse myself with your interior and requite with you, O oh Jesus, heartbeat for heartbeat, breath for breath, affection for affection, and desire for desire. I intend to plunge my being into your most sacred intelligence and, making all these heartbeats, breaths, affections and desires flow in the immensity of your will, I intend to multiply them to the infinity. I desire, beloved Jesus, to form waves of heartbeats so that not one evil heartbeat may resound in your heart and, by this means, relieve you of all the bitterness you experience on the inside. I intend to form waves of affections and desires to cast away all evil affections and desires which might, however slightly, sadden your heart. My beloved Jesus, I also intend to form waves of breath and thoughts to cast away any breath or thought that might cause you the least displeasure. I will be vigilant, O oh Jesus, so that nothing else may afflict you or add more bitterness to your interior sorrows. O oh my Jesus, please let my whole interior swim in the immensity of your interior. In this way, I will discover enough love and goodwill to keep all the evils and displeasing desires the souls have inflicted upon you from penetrating your interior. Meanwhile, your enemies, Disproving Veronica's courageous gesture, flog you, push you and shove you along the way. A few more steps and again you stop, and yet, under the weight of so much suffering, your love does not stop. On seeing the pious women weeping on account of your suffering, you forget yourself and console them by saying, Daughters, do not weep over my suffering, but over your sins and those of your children. What a sublime teaching! How sweet your word is! O oh Jesus, with you I offer reparation for our lack of charity, and I ask you for the grace to make me forget myself and remember only your interests. On hearing you speak, your enemies become enraged and with ropes they yank you and push you with such rage that you fall. As you fall and bang against the stones, the weight of the cross crushes you and you feel yourself die. Let me sustain you and protect your most sacred face with my hands. I see you touch the ground and gasp in your blood. But your enemies, 
wanting to make you stand, again yank you with ropes, pull you by the hair and kick you, but to no avail. You are dying, my Jesus. What sorrow, my heart breaks with grief. Almost dragging you, they take you to Mount Calvary. As they drag you, I hear you make reparations for all offences of souls consecrated to you that weigh upon you so much that no matter how hard you try to stand, you cannot. And so, dragged and trampled on, you reach Calvary, leaving behind you the red traces of your most precious blood. Jesus is despoiled of his garments and is crowned with thorns for the third time. Jesus, here new sufferings await you. They strip you again, tearing off both your garment and the crown of thorns. Oh, in feeling the thorns being torn out from the inside of your head, you groan. As they tear off your garment, they also tear your lacerated flesh that has a tear to it. The wounds rip open, your blood flows to the ground in torrents, and the pain is so overwhelming that you collapse, almost dead. But nobody is moved to compassion over you, my love. On the contrary, with bestial fury, they force the crown of thorns on you again. They beat it into your head, and the lacerations and the tearing of your hair that is clotted in your coagulated blood causes you such intense pain that only the angels can convey what you endure. The angels, horrified, turn their heavenly gaze from you and weep. My despoiled Jesus, allow me to press you to my heart and warm you, as I see that an icy, mortal sweat pervades your most sacred humanity and causes you to shiver. How I long to give my life for you. How I long to give my blood in exchange for your blood that you have lost in exchange for my life. And, straining to look at me with his languishing and dying eyes, Jesus seems to say to me, My child, how much souls cost me. This is the place where I wait all souls in order to save them, where I want to offer reparation for the sins of those who degrade themselves to a state lower than base and so obstinately offend me that they reach the point of not being able to live without committing sins. Their minds are blinded and they sin unbridedly. This is why they crown me with thorns for the third time. In being despoiled of my garments, I offer reparation for those who wear extravagant and indecent clothing, for sins against modesty, and for those who are so bound to riches, honours and pleasures that their hearts make gods of them. Indeed, each one of these offences is a death I endure, and if I do not die, it is because the will of my eternal Father has not yet decreed the moment of my death. O oh Jesus, you are stripped of your garments. My love, while I offer reparation with you, I beg you to strip me of everything with your most sacred hands and, and not to allow any bad affections to enter my heart. Watch over it, surround it with your sorrows and fill it with your love. May my life be the complete repetition of your life. Through your blessing, strengthen my desire to despise myself with your blessing. Bless me from your heart and grant me the strength to
to be present at your sorrowful crucifixion so that I may remain crucified with you. Reflections and Practices by Saint Hannibal de Francia Jesus carries his cross. The love of Jesus for the cross and his eager longing to die in it for the salvation of souls are immense. And do we experience love and suffering like Jesus? Can we say that our heartbeats echo his divine heartbeats and that we too ask for the cross we bear? When we suffer, do we have the intention of becoming companions of Jesus in order to relieve him from the weight of the cross? How do we accompany him when he receives insults? Are we always ready to offer him our little sufferings to relieve him of his sorrows? In walking, in praying and in experiencing the hardships of sufferings under the weight of the interior sorrows, do we let our sorrows fly to Jesus so that they, like a veil, absorb his sweat and comfort him? Do we make his hardships our own? Let us all say, O oh my Jesus, call me to be always close to you, and may you remain always close to me, so that I may always comfort you with my sorrows. Thanksgiving after each hour. My beloved Jesus, you have called me in this hour of your passion to keep you company, and I have come. With the most touching and eloquent words, I seem to hear you praying, offering reparation, suffering and pleading in anguish and sorrow for the salvation of souls. I tried to follow you in everything. Now I owe you my heartfelt thank you and I bless you. Yes, O oh Jesus, I repeat my thank you thousands and thousands of times. And I bless you for all that you have done and suffered for me and for everyone. I thank you and I bless you for every drop of blood you shed. I thank you for every breath, heartbeat and step. I thank you for all the words, glances, afflictions and affronts you lovingly endured. For everything you did, O oh Jesus, I offer you my thank you and I bless you. O oh my dear Jesus. Let my soul send forth a continuous flow of thanksgivings and blessings. May they draw down on all of us the flow of your blessings and graces. O oh my sweet Jesus, press me to your heart and, with your most sacred hands, mark every particle of my being with your I bless you, so that my being may send forth a continuous hymn of blessings to you.